National Association of the Realtors just settled for $418 million in real estate made change big time. What does that mean as a buyer? What does it mean as a seller? Will homes be more expensive to purchase? Will real estate agents be a thing of the past? What is to come of this? I'm going to answer all your questions in this video. So firstly, I'll explain the lawsuit and explain it, what it might affect and the changes that might occur starting in July 2024. I'll also break down what is the standard commission and is it going to be cut down? Has it been always negotiable or will it now be more negotiable and more favorsome towards the buyers and sellers of today's market? Now, briefly talking about the context to the settlement is once it's approved, because it hasn't been approved yet, but it probably will be as recording at the time of this video, uh, the $418 million, a lawsuit, um, is going to be paid out by the National Association of Realtors, which hosts over 1.5 million realtors uh, and are kind of standardized in this whole association. Now, it doesn't mean anything to you, but what will probably happen to realtors is we will have to increase our dues to be able to pay for that lawsuit on top of our normal uh, expenses. So realtors, if you're watching this, just expect probably next year our dues to skyrocket up to pay into this association to pay for this lawsuit. Now, the big deal added to the money payment of what we have to pay out is that there is a rule going to be passed that commissions towards a buyer's agent is not allowed to be in the listing description of a listing in the multiple listing service. Now, traditionally, a seller would pay a negotiated fee which is more common than not, a 5 to 6% fee towards a listing agent, and half of which of that payment will be offered to a buyer's agent as their compensation for representing the buyer on that sale. Now, I'll go on that in a second. Another legality is if you do want to see a house, if you are a buyer in this market, you do have to sign a representation agreement, a buyer brokerage agreement with an agent or a brokerage before you go see the home. Sure, there will be open houses, but if you want to privately look at homes, you will now have to be signed on with an agent to represent you see that property before you go and see that property. Now, those are the main points. Uh, now, what does this look like and mean for uh, what buying a home will look like or selling a home will look like? So let's say you want to buy a house in 2024. What does this normally look like and what is going to change here come July in 2024? So you're searching for a house. You have your down payment saved. What else are you paying for? Well, you do have your agent costs for your settlement agency, um, the title company or attorney that represents you on that sale. To close that transaction, you would have to pay them a fee. Uh, you normally pay a lender fees. If you're getting a loan, you have fees to pay towards your lender to process the loan. Inspection, if you're getting a home inspection on a property, you would pay for a home inspection. If the bank is going out to do an appraisal on the home to make sure it's worth the money that you are actually purchasing a home on, then you would get an appraisal, and that's a cost that a buyer would take on, as well as your taxes for that property when you purchase it. Now, with all that, that's normally what you do pay. Now, come July here in 2024, if you want an agent, a real estate agent, to represent you, to show you houses, to walk you through that transaction process and explain everything and negotiate on your behalf, you now have to pay the fees as well for the agent that is representing you. So on quick look, a seller saves money on the sale and a buyer now has to pay more out of pocket for a home. So it on paper is more expensive. Now I'll get to that. Most likely what will happen now is sellers will still offer a certain amount, a distinct amount of money as a credit in the description to the buyer. So instead of reading buyer compensation is 3%, it will now read seller to offer X amount of money credit to a buyer towards their closing costs. It would now be up to the buyer to decide if they would like to use that money to pay for agent representation through the sale. Maybe they want to use that as a closing cost money to help them with their, their closing cost or a, uh, a point down uh, for interest rate buy down, whatever the case may be, they can use that credit how they see fit. Which might sound very enticing for a buyer to have now some cash to help with the closing cost and getting into a home, but the cost is not to have an agent on the purchase 
to represent you on that sale, which depending on who you are and myself being in real estate, I might be a little bit biased, but it could be a huge flaw in the new system. And I'll tell you why. And I'm reading off my script that I wrote because there is a lot of information here and I do want to come off in a clear and concise way for everybody to kind of understand the situation that might happen here come July 2024. Either we'll have to catch an open house, uh, which some homes won't have, or hire and sign a representation agreement, a buyer broker agreement with an agent to then show you that home. So it almost forces you to work with an agent if you want to check out houses. And you would have to establish a cost upfront with that buyer brokerage agreement that you would pay that agent given the sale of a property, whether that be a percentage or a fixed dollar amount towards your agent, you would have to have that in the buyer brokerage agreement before you contract and see properties. Circling back, you now have the option to either use that credit if a seller is offering that credit towards yourself or something else or agent representation. Now, I know what you might be thinking, maybe you'll get lucky and see a home in an open house and write up a contract and you don't have to use an agent and you save that money for yourself. Great. Now your options are then to hire an attorney to draft up that self-represented purchase agreement and you are still responsible for the negotiations and the timeline of the deal. Or maybe you do get lucky once again and have the listing agent help you write up a contract for you and to take the seller credit all to yourself if they are offering a seller credit. But let's not forget about dual agency, which is legal in some states and legal here in Virginia, but most agents don't practice it. Dual agency is when a listing agent both represents the seller and the buyer of said property, which could get really dicey really quick. Listing agents typically is there to represent the best interests of the seller to get them the most amount of money in the easiest amount of sale. The buyer on the other end is supposed to get a deal on their end. So when a listing agent kind of gets stretched thin between both sides, it usually doesn't work out that fruitful. So that realistically leaves you with one option uh, to hire an attorney to draft a purchase agreement and you take a part-time job for the next month and a half to navigate through that buying a home by your own. Just like how it's normally been uh, with commissions, they've always been negotiable. It's been a free market and the market gives you the option to either go with the top representation and pay a higher fee or go with a discount agent or use a family friend possible for a discount or try to negotiate with an agent on what fees they may charge you for your services. Current commission market is typically around five to 6%. Again, half of which would, would go to a buyer's agent. So let's look at an example of how much you would actually be paid if you're a real estate agent starting out for the typical amount. So this might sound like defending the agency commission that's happening right now, the typical two to 3% towards a buyer's agent. But let's take this realistic example of what happens when a buyer does get 3% of a sale property. How much money are they actually taking home and is it too high of a price to be normally paying of what the current market holds. Being a real estate agent, uh, of course you have your brokerage dues, team dues, licensing dues, lockbox dues, a bunch of dues, roughly about 3,000. But besides the fact, let's say you're looking at a $400,000 home, 3% of which is 12 grand, which might seem pretty high for a lot uh, and to show you a few homes and write a contract, walk you through everything and negotiate for you. But let's see where that 12 grand really goes from working with a buyer's agent. There's brokerages and there's teams. Teams are really popular when it comes to buying a house. A lot of lead listing agents will then pass you down the roster to a buyer's agent on their team. So let's say you're starting out on a buyer's agent at, on a team. You might have to pay 30 to 50% to your team for every transaction. So right off the bat, that $12,000 is fizzled down to $6,000 for their paycheck. Then there's brokerage dues. Now, a team agent is also in line with a brokerage. Every real estate agent has to sign their license with a brokerage, and every brokerage is different with the fees they charge and the services they provide, but let's say it's a normal, typical brokerage that charges you about 25% of your check towards their brokerage every time. So that $12,000, that 3% is now fizzled down to $4,500. Then you have 30% taxes and self-employment. It's now $3,150 to the agent, and then you minus health insurance because agents don't have any benefits and monthly brokerage dues of $100 monthly, then divided by monthly cost of the fees, which is around another $100 a month, your walk away after taxes and fees is $2,550 every check. So on that $400,000 property with fees, 
brokerage dues, team splits. That check was $12,000 and now it is $2,550. So arguably a rough monthly income in today's market, even if you do sell 12 homes a year, which is still the above average of what an agent typically sells. I think there's a lot more hands in the pots than there ever will be. And that's why the commission standard has always been around that five to 6%. Again, it's a free market. It's always been negotiable, but I think there is a time for a change. This change could be good. There is more real estate agents out there in Virginia than there are homes available. Uh, so fizzled down, the supply and demand is still very low. This is not going to fix any problem with that, uh, but it will diminish a lot of real estate agents out of the business because it is going to be more of a professional market. You will now have to interview for the job of being the real estate agent and to take that money instead of a buyer using that towards their closing costs and their lender points. You now have to represent yourself and what you can provide for a buyer to be worth that amount of fee and for the buyer to actually pay that fee towards you. Change is coming. I think change is needed. Real estate has been the same way for quite a while and technology has upped its advancements quite a bit, uh, taking a lot of responsibilities away from an agent. So maybe it is good that a agent won't be offered as much commission, or maybe it might be bad and there will be more lawsuits because people will represent themselves. We'll see how it all shapes out. It's still really undecided at this point. We can make predictions kind of like I, what I did of uh, seller credits back to the buyer instead of just buyer brokerage commissions being offered. I think we might hold on to this traditional market a little bit in the beginning, but it might shift away. Our team's gonna last, our brokerage is gonna last, our agent's gonna fall by the wayside. Um, I will let you know and keep you on track here leading into July, 2024. See you in the next one.